Hello and welcome to an India Today special broadcast that comes to you from the strife-torn Ukraine. I'm Gaurav Savant. The Russian President Vladimir Putin has directly addressed Ukrainian soldiers, asking them not to interfere in Russia's operations. He's insisting his aim is very clear. The Russian President's aim is a regime change in Ukraine and to demilitarize this country. What's the situation on ground? Over the course of the next half hour, I will get you details. But first up, our top story. Bombs, missiles and armored vehicles. Putin attacks Ukraine from land, sea and air. Russian missiles pummel Ukrainian cities. Death, destruction and doom in Ukraine. Putin invades his neighbor. The West goes into a huddle. Russian troops inch closer to capital Kiev. President Zelensky says 130 deaths in the Russian invasion so far. Putin declares war. The Ukrainian capital Kiev resembles a ghost town. Till yesterday, there were massive traffic jams. People were desperate to get out of the city. The night sky was lit up with Russian missiles and rockets coming in to target vital assets and vital points and military installations. Some of the anti-missile defense systems like the S-300, they were activated and were able to neutralize at least some of the incoming missiles that were caught on camera. We bring you this ground report from Kiev. Day two of Russia's invasion of Ukraine saw its air defense systems firing across Kiev's skyline. What looked like a residential building was on fire. Ukraine says the attacks were carried out by Russian crews or ballistic missiles. After hours of early morning attack, this is what Kiev looked like after sunrise. India Today, the only channel reporting from Ground Zero, captured the devastating and haunting images. This is the, the, the ground floor, let's say, or the, the first floor. And uh, there was a guy inside, it's a sleeping room, this one, with a balcony. And there was a guy sleeping uh, inside when the rocket uh, landed here. And uh, he's fine, but uh, in, in a shock. But uh, it happened when he was asleep. I cannot even imagine what it feels like to be sleeping and you wake up and this happens at your home. Sirens sounded across Kiev as residents were told to seek refuge in air raid shelters. People have been uh, sitting here, here from 5 o'clock in the morning uh, right after these loud explosions have been heard uh, in the city center. So um, not um, uh, all of them really want to talk or show their faces because the situation now is really tense and everybody understands that um, the worst probably is yet to come. Several residents were seen fleeing into bomb shelters, metros and subway stations as the streets of Kiev remain deserted. I'm all, almost in a bomb shelter. Therefore, in any minute, I can switch off. A few minutes ago, we've heard a heavy shelling, a heavy sound kind of bombing. At 4 a.m. in the morning, there was attack over Kiev, but our anti-aircraft system protected Kiev citizens. Meanwhile, Ukraine president, confirmed that Kiev is under siege and that Russian forces have entered the city. He issued a stern warning that the Russian armed forces would seize Kiev within 96 hours, bringing a new iron curtain down on Europe. They have declared me public enemy number one and my family enemy number two. They want to destroy Ukraine politically by destroying the head of the state. Across Ukraine, explosions were reported. 
viewers can hear this this is mariupol you hear a series hear this sound hear the sound this is mariupol russian tanks entered the port city of odessa and wrested control of chernobyl with god of savant in mariupol maria paisarenko and jan husar in kiev bureau report india today india today has access satellite imagery from the 24th of february that shows at the russia ukraine border Russia has a large number of troops, armored personal carriers, tanks, vehicles and even armed helicopters. A clear indication that this is just phase 1 of Russia's operations in Ukraine. Another indication that the Russian president Vladimir Putin is in no mood to give up or pull back. India today's Ankit Kumar gets us this India today exclusive report. tanks crossing into ukraine an air assault on key air bases warships afloat in the black sea ukraine is under attack from all sides land sea and air точно російські India today has accessed satellite images of what is being described as the biggest attack in Europe since World War II. Proof of how Russia is preparing for more assaults on Ukraine. These images were captured on the 24th of February, the day Russia invaded Ukraine. They show a new ground attack helicopter deployment near Tomarovka in Russia, 20 miles north of the border with Ukraine. The satellite images also show deployment of armored vehicles and artillery in the border areas to the north and east of Ukraine. On Thursday, Russian troops captured the Chernobyl nuclear power plant entering through Belarus. But clearly the Russians are not stopping there. The satellite images show Russian troops with more than 50 heavy equipment transporters on the border of Belarus. A large military convoy is also visible in one of the satellite images accessed by India today. Russian convoy can be seen 6 miles east of the border heading in a westerly direction towards Ukraine. What is evident from these images is that Russia is preparing for a prolonged battle. In fact, Russian forces even set up a new field hospital in 24 hours, 15 kilometers east of the Ukraine border. This report filed with inputs from Ankit Kumar for India Today. The barrage of missile and rocket fire was unrelenting and that is why hundreds of people in Kiev had to take shelter in bomb shelters and in places where there were no bomb shelters people were advised to rush to the nearest metro station now Kiev has a big network of metro and one of the deepest network of of metro systems and that is why people were asked to get inside while they stayed inside for safety many complained there was one no water two little air and three they were extremely uncomfortable inside but at least they were happy to be alive india today is maria with this report there is nothing more jarring than the sound of air raid sirens when the hooter goes off it's a desperate dash to safety the bunker has become home to many not many are lucky to escape the barrage of artillery fire by russian forces Two days into the war, cities that were flourishing a week ago lie ravaged. Bodies are piling up, buildings reduced to debris. Do 
those who are fleeing the war heading to the nearest border. But for most, the only refuge is air raid shelters and hastily constructed bunkers. The stocked up supplies are running thin. All that Ukrainians can hope for is that somehow the shelling ceases. It's hard, but I'm holding on. We have been sleeping, but we woke up to an explosion at 4.20 a.m. near our house. An aerial rocket was shot down. Yes, and a nearby house caught fire. And there were many victims. And we were waiting until 7 a.m. in our apartment, in the corridor, in the bathroom, until the end of curfew. So we can come here. I work here. In a matter of two days, life has turned upside down for the people here. Safety now is to be huddled up in a dimly lit underground cavern and hoping that one day this nightmare will end. People have been uh, sitting here, here from 5 o'clock in the morning uh, right after these loud explosions have been heard uh, in the city centre. So um, not um, uh, all of them really want to talk or show their faces because the situation now is really tense and everybody understands that um, the worst probably is yet to come. With Maria from the conflict zone Ukraine, India today. The bustling national capital of Ukraine, Kiev, is almost unrecognizable. Huge buildings, swanky buildings, bustling streets, hundreds of people on the streets. That was just two days ago. And suddenly, the Russian attack, thousands fleeing the city and a national capital in places almost reduced to rubble. Take a look at the two images we are putting out on your television screen. Ukraine's capital, Kiev, before and after death destruction and doom life in ukraine has come to a violent halt two days after russia launched an invasion the impact of war on the nation is grave and visible the streets of kiev which were jammed with thousands of vehicles when the russian threat escalated are now hauntingly desolate the capital city of Kyiv, where nearly 30 lakh people once resided, one can see piles of rubble after Russia's air assault. Homes destroyed, people homeless and on the run. Ukrainian and Russian forces fought a fierce battle in the Sami region in Kharkiv. The aftermath is troubling and saddening. In southeastern Ukraine, the city of Mariupol, where shelling continued non-stop on Wednesday, many areas are reduced to debris. Plumes of smoke can be seen after Russian troops started pounding the city. The Chernobyl plant has now been captured by Russia. The plant is infamous for being the cause of the worst nuclear disaster in history, both in terms of cost and casualties. New images after the invasion showed Russian tanks brawling the premises of the plant. The city itself has been a ghost town for decades now. The takeover is more symbolic than anything else. The disturbing images show Ukraine's tipping point into humanitarian crisis and that there are no winners in a war. Bureau Report, India Today. The advancing Russian soldiers from the north, the ones coming in from the Belarus side heading straight to Kiev, stopped at Chernobyl and took control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Remember, Chernobyl was the site of the terrible nuclear disaster, the worst in the world in 1986. The moment Russian troops came in, there were initially pitched battles with Ukrainian troops, but the Russian troops are now fully in control, a fact conceded by the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky. He also told the world that the Russian soldiers had taken some people hostage at Chernobyl. 130 kilometers north of Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, lies Chernobyl the site of the world's worst nuclear disaster ever. A faulty reactor led to an explosion in 1986 in what was then 
the Soviet Socialist Republic of Ukraine, an integral part of USSR. 36 years later, Russia is back in control of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. Sadly, I have to inform you that as of now, the Chernobyl zone, the so-called Chernobyl exclusion zone, and all the structures of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant are under the control of Russian armed groups. According to reports from Ukraine, Russian special forces occupied the entire Chernobyl area that includes a 32-kilometer radius exclusion zone around the plant that is stuck in a time wrap. Having been devoid of human life for 36 years since the explosion in 1986. Chernobyl, to the north of Ukraine, sits right at the border with neighboring Belarus. The Chernobyl radioactive zone is spread across both Ukraine and Belarus. And reports suggest that the special Russian forces stationed in Belarus are the ones who invading Ukraine from the north took control of Chernobyl. The government of Ukraine claims that the Russians are holding civilian staff hostage at the nuclear facility. We are outraged by credi credible reports that Russian soldiers are currently holding the staff of the Chernobyl facilities hostage. This unlawful and dangerous hostage taking which could upend the routine civil service efforts required to maintain and protect uh, the nuclear waste facilities is obviously incredibly alarming and greatly concerning. concerning. We condemn it and we request their release. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant had been completely decommissioned and with no human habitation in its vicinity, it has largely been a spot of controlled tourist interest. An international team has been working at Chernobyl, collaborating on the construction of a 32,000 ton dome around the radioactive reactor. The threat of war meant that the work stopped about a week before the actual invasion began. The people who have reportedly been taken hostage would be the maintenance and monitoring staff left behind. With radiation levels still in the danger zone, it is well understood that there is no strategic military significance of the occupation of Chernobyl. Its only possible importance in this war may be the fact that Chernobyl lies on the road into Ukraine from Belarus, a staging point on the corridor that the invading Russian troops could be opening towards the river Dnieper and onwards to the capital, Kyiv. Europe has initiated certain new measures against Russia, including talking about seizing the properties of the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. When Britain stopped flights of Aeroflot to Britain, Russia in retaliation has stopped flights of British Airways to Moscow and to other Russian cities. Apart from that, overflight of Russian aircraft over Poland has also been banned. A lot of reaction coming against Russia, but Bashar al Assad, the Syrian president, he stands by Russia, as does China, very clearly saying Russia should not be singled out. Assad said historical wrongs are finally being set right. Sorry to keep you waiting. The West hits back at Russia. The retaliation has come in the form of economic sanctions. The US and its allies will not allow Russian banks or oligarchs to raise funds from their markets. Putin chose this war, and now he and his country will bear the consequences. U.S. President Joe Biden, while announcing the sanctions, made one thing clear. America will not join the war in Ukraine. Our forces are not and will not be engaged in the conflict with Russia in Ukraine, but to defend our NATO allies and reassure those allies in the East. As I made crystal clear, the United States will defend every inch of NATO territory with the full force of American power. America's allies, the UK, the European Union, Taiwan, Australia and Japan have hit out at Moscow. We will introduce new trade restrictions and stringent export controls similar to those that they in the US are implementing. We will bring forward new legislation to ban the export of all dual-use items to Russia. Support for Moscow comes from another neighbour, China. Beijing has so far refused to call Russia's attack on Ukraine an invasion. The Chinese president has urged Putin 
to resolve the dispute through negotiations. While President Putin of Russia remains unfazed, many in his country are questioning his actions. As Russian forces continued its onslaught in Ukraine, Moscovites took to the streets with banners saying no to war. The chorus against Putin's war was picked up across many cities worldwide. Protesters staged demonstrations in Paris, Tokyo, Jerusalem and Sydney and in several American cities like Los Angeles and New York. But the Putin war machine marches on. Bureau Report, India Today. There is some hope for the 16,000 Indians stranded in Ukraine. The first batch of Indians stranded in Ukraine have successfully crossed the border into Romania on their way back to India. The Indian government has ordered the evacuation of all 16,000 Indians at Indian government's cost. People have been asked to reach the nearest, safest border and then Indian officials will help them cross over the border and Air India aircraft, of course, Indian Air Force aircraft are also on standby to bring the Indian students stranded in Ukraine back home. Around 16,000 Indians are caught right now in the middle of the war abroad. Students and other internationals stuck are waiting for their country to evacuate them. इथे सध्या आमचे इंडियन एटीएम कार्ड्स चालत नाही आहेत सुपरमार्केट मध्ये सामान सगळं संपत चाललेलं आहे तर आमची एम्बेसी कडे हीच विनंती आहे की लवकरात लवकर आमच्यासाठी फ्लाइट अरेंज करून आम्हाला आमच्या देशी घेऊन जा इथं आमच्या सिटी मध्ये सध्या खूप जास्त पॅनिक चं एनवायरमेंट क्रिएट झालंय कारण की इथं जे सुपरमार्केट आहेत ते सगळे बंद होत चालले आहेत आणि त्यांच्यातलं जे किराणा आहे ते पण संपतही चाललाय 5,000 kilometers away, their parents are worried sick, with no power to help their kids. I just want to ask that my child will come back to India. And I just want to pray to God that my child will come back to India. Because there is no need for any of them. I have been stuck in the cave, my child. But there is no need for any of them. 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 खाने के लिए थोड़ा बहुत सामान है और कुछ नहीं है उनके पास पानी वगैरह कुछ भी नहीं है पीने के लिए तो थोड़ा बहुत जो सामान है उसी से अपना गुजारा चला रहे हैं छह सात ये फ्रेंड्स हैं तो आपस में मिलवाट के उसको थोड़ा बहुत खा रहे हैं थोड़ा थोड़ा यूक्रेनियन एयर स्पेस रिमेन्स क्लोज एंडिंग द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ एन इमिडिएट एयर लिफ्ट द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट हैज एडवाइज इट सिटीजन इन यूक्रेन टू स्टे क्लियर ऑफ द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड टेक रिफ्यूज इन बॉम्ब शेल्टर्स Indian missions in Hungary, Poland and other bordering countries have been instructed to help with evacuation by land. Despite government's assurances, the sense of panic prevails. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also spoke to Russian President Vladimir Putin, raising concerns of Indian national safety. The Indian Air Force is on a standby, ready to swoop in and evacuate our citizens as soon as possible. Bureau Report, India Today. India has all along been a champion of the non-aligned movement. At this point of time, India is walking the tightrope, extremely close both to the United States of America and to Russia privileged special partners, both Russia and the United States. There is a strategic partnership with both the countries. India also close to Ukraine, but India choosing not to take sides. In fact, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in his conversation with the Russian President Vladimir Putin, talked about dialogue, negotiation and a peaceful settlement. India is one of your major defense partners. Is India fully in sync with the United States on, on Russia? We're going to be we're in consultation with with India today. We haven't resolved that completely. This one reply from U.S. President Joe Biden at his press meet on Thursday stood out. Let me be clear: these are totally defensive moves on our part. The U.S. expects India, a strategic partner, to condemn Russian invasion of Ukraine. But for India, both the U.S. and Russia are vital defense and trade allies. It can't pick sides. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi has spoken to Russian President Vladimir Putin and has urged him to hold dialogue and stop the military operation. The immediate focus is safe evacuation of Indian citizens from Ukraine. We have also asked our embassies, our ambassadors in the countries neighboring Ukraine, and I mentioned these, uh, Poland, Romania, Slovakia and Hungary, to send teams of their officers to the border areas with Ukraine to facilitate the exit of Indian nationals from Ukraine, to permit them to come into their countries so where they can be safely evacuated back to India. The first real test for New Delhi is when the UN Security Council votes, where both Washington and Moscow will expect support. <coughs> for India, the challenges are many. Russia is a key supplier of weapons and spares. It is also India's key diplomatic link to Afghanistan and Central Asia. On the other hand, India is part of quadrilateral alliance firmed up to contain China and that completes the tricky triangle. India has been very careful so far. Its statements in the UN Security Council have been very good, very balanced. Uh, the statements basically are saying that the security interests of all parties should be protected. New Delhi is under immense pressure to take a stand. The West is unhappy and Russia certainly does not want India to take sides. India had taken a very cautious approach even in the year 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea. The situation is a little different today, but a few days from now, India will have to decide whether if it is going to side with any nation or will continue to be a neutral force. In New Delhi, Geeta Mohan for India Today. And coming up next on India First, understanding the man who's spearheading this campaign against Ukraine, who's ordered not just a regime change, but also demilitarization of Ukraine. Up next, we will tell you about the Russian president, former KGB agent Vladimir Putin.